Well, this has been a very informative discussion, but before we end the discussion, I'd like to get some closing thoughts and just brief pearls from each of the panelists. Dr. Ann Baca. So from the um, earlier stage, from the uh, surgical perspective, I think that melanoma surgery has changed quite a bit. I think that we do less um, completion lymph node dissections now than we did previously. I think we have to be aware of that when we then think about adjuvant therapy for our patients. We have to think of, uh, be aware of that also when we follow our patients that if we don't do a completion lymph node dissection, we need to follow those patients with ultrasound. Additionally, uh, forward thinking, we know that those patients and then that we don't do a completion lymph node dissection on will be patients that will be recurring. And most of the times those recurrences are local, regional. And we need to then think about what do we treat those patients with. And uh, these adjuvant treatments also will affect that and what they will be available to those patients. So I think it's an evolving landscape. I think though it is really the next step from a surgical perspective that these patients then will also potentially become candidates for neoadjuvant therapies and then will really will serve I think the melanoma community well because that will lead us to be able to assess biomarkers with those neoadjuvant studies and really help us understand how to best treat these patients that may have been on other therapies, failed those, recurred, and how we can best treat them. Okay, Dr. Hamid? Well, I think what I found most uh, intriguing is that what I hear from my surgical colleagues as they talk about adjuvant and neoadjuvant also relates to what we're saying to our patients with metastatic disease. That we have got to do better, we have more options, and we need to understand how to present those options to our patients. We need to understand which patients are appropriate for the right therapies, which is biomarker. We have to understand when to stop therapies, um, and there's some data there, and how to deal with these toxicities that we're now seeing with our combinations. Okay. Dr. Luke? So I think there are two points that I'd try to make that are, I hope are somewhat practical. The first is that I think that the standard of care needs to be acknowledged, especially in the community, that adjuvant therapy, I think, for stage three disease, with even with the caveats we discussed, is the standard of care. And that it really should be the case, the patient should be offering it almost to every patient with stage three. And that, that really is a change from the historical practice where options were perhaps not so tolerable. Uh, but that, that's definitely something that has changed recently. The other one I'd sort of point out is that with so many questions surrounding what do we do after adjuvant therapy failure or in the second line, that clinical trial participation for melanoma is still essential. We made all this progress, but now we've hit these new questions that we don't know. So cooperative group trials is a great point. A lot of these uh, trials for refractory patients, but you know, even referral of patients who are interested in novel therapeutics, there are a lot of interesting trials ongoing right now. And clinical trial has definitely, accrual has definitely slowed because of the availability of a lot of useful drugs and it really needs to continue to push forward. Dr. Pastel? I think we have a lot of reasons for optimism, but until we have 100% of patients cured or under great control with their melanoma, I think we have more work to do. So for all the reasons that we've been speaking about. Uh, we look forward to patients in trials and learning more. How we can figure out how to afford these drugs is gonna be a big issue, and how we best give them either together or in sequence. Hopefully we'll have some clue and can move forward and help 100% of the patients. And Dr. Tauby? Well, I will echo most of my colleagues because they tackled them very important points. I think uh, the way we, I think about the management of melanoma today is that we're really fortunate that we have so many therapies that have proven efficacy now our job is gonna be along three lines. One is to actually optimize the therapy that we have in terms of better patient selection and management of toxicity. Uh, two, actually take the therapies that we have into new settings that we haven't used them yet, such as brain metastases, the neoadjuvant setting. And three is really try to find solutions for our patients that don't have treatments right now, the unmet medical needs, including PD-1 progressors that we've discussed earlier, patients with leptomeningeal disease and other really difficult situations that we really have to do better with. Great. Well, thank you all for your contributions to this discussion. On behalf of our panel, we thank you for joining us and we hope that you found this Enclave Peer Exchange to be useful and informative.